Welcome, beloved, to the Way of Salvation program. I'm sure that by now you have understood that there are demons. And you cannot say that there are no demons. What happens in the physical is always pushed uh, in the spiritual realm by spiritual things. Anything that happens in the physical has to happen in the spiritual realms first. So you cannot say you don't believe in demons. And also, you have understood by now that what is happening in the world right now has to do with the end times. So I thank God that you are being informed. Today, I want to handle demons and fear. Demons and fear. As I said, you have understood that what is happening in the world today has to do with the end times. It is God who, who has allowed certain things to happen according to his divine program. That is why you see what, is, what you see in the world today. So today I want to handle a very important aspect. That is fear. You know, God has allowed this demon we call coronavirus to do two things. Number one, to punish sinners for living without regard to him. God has allowed the demon we call coronavirus to punish sinners for living without regard to him. Number two, to warn humanity and to wake them up for them to repent from their sins because he is coming soon. So number one, to punish sinners. Number two, as a wake-up call for people to re repent from their evil ways because Jesus is coming soon. Now, there are two people in this world, as I always say, holy and unholy people, godly and ungodly people. These are the people in this world. And if I use a stadium, if I use a stadium as an example, two teams are on the field of play. One team has a black jersey with its supporters on one, on, on one part of the stadium. The other team has white jersey with its supporters also on the other side. Now, the team with the black jersey's supporters are causing trouble in the stadium. So the FA may decide, or the football administration will decide that the black people, the, the team with the black jersey, should be removed from the stadium. Now, if security men begin to do this, and you know that you are not a part of the people wearing the black jersey, will you be afraid? Definitely not. Because you, are, you know that what they are doing will not affect you. You see, that is exactly what is happening in the world today. God is using the coronavirus. God Almighty is using the coronavirus to punish sinners who are causing trouble, who are living without regard to him in this world. Now, if he has allowed a demon to punish sinners and you know that you know that you know that you are not a sinner. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? If you are afraid, it means you know you are not living right in his, in his eyes. You see, like the example of the football stadium. If you know you are wearing a white jersey and you know that you have not caused any trouble, you will not be afraid of any security man who will come and remove the supporters of the other team. 
It is exactly so. If God Almighty has allowed demons to punish sinners and you know deep down in your heart that you are not living as a sinner, you will ne- never be afraid. You will never be afraid. You see, if you are afraid, it means you are a sinner and you are not living holy. Therefore, repent and live holy for God and you will come under the shadow and the blood of Jesus. Unfortunately, and on the other hand, some Christians, so-called Christians, instead of living in peace and in faith, because we know that what is happening will not affect us, we are rather living in fear. That is very sad. Instead of living in peace and in faith, so-called Christians, even preachers, are living in fear. And that is very bad. You see, I've heard some people say, God have mercy on us. God have mercy on us. They have been asking for forgiveness of sin. It means they are not living to please God. The wisest thing to do in the world today is to turn to God Almighty from your sins. And you have mercy on you. One funny thing is that instead of turning to God in repentance and crying to God for, for divine mercy, nations around the world have resorted to human expertise. They are seeking the wisdom of humanity and have locked down their cities. You see, I've heard some of the presidents say, our only hope is with God. It is very funny. If you know your hope is with God, open the churches and let true Christians go in and intercede on behalf of your nation. But if you shut down the churches and you cry to God, it's like you have locked yourself up, holding the keys, and you are saying, God, open the door for us. Are you not funny in the eyes of God? You are. So stop acting funny. Those of you who are saying you are a Christian. You see? The keys are in your own hands. Open the door and you can enter. If you seek God's intervention, then open the churches and cry to him and he will hear you. Else what you are doing amounts to nothing. You see? Uh, Some of the presidents and the prime ministers around the world who have locked down the churches and have closed down Uh, the churches that they shouldn't enter. Let me ask you one question. Do you think God Almighty, who created the heavens and the earth, whom you say you worship, do you think he will tell you, close my church, don't let anybody enter to come and talk to uh, and, and seek my face? Do you think God will do that? Definitely not. So you are doing this simply out of fear. It is out of fear. You see, that is why God wants me to address fear today. God would never advise you to close his own house and later come and cry to him outside. He will not do that. So you have to understand that what you are doing doesn't correspond with the word of God. I really appreciate some presidents and some prime ministers around the world at this time who have said that they will not close the churches The Prime Minister of the Netherlands said, I will not close down the churches. I give him bravo. He has done well. The President of Tanzania also said, I will not close the churches because that is where true healing is. Wow! He has really demonstrated that he's a Christian leader. You see, some people may be criticizing him, criticizing him for doing that. That is from human expertise. But I want to ask you a question. Is God a healer or not? Answer that one. Can God heal or not? The second question, answer it yourself. Number three, in the church of God, can God heal his people in his church or not? So you see, I really appreciate those uh, leaders who are giving respect to God Almighty. And uh, if, you are, if you have resorted to, to medical doctors, you are seeking their advice, 
I want to tell you and remind you that they are only human. They can only give human advice. You see? As I said in the other episode, what is happening in the world today is a spiritual problem. You are fighting an unseen enemy. A demon God has allowed to destroy. That you have given it a name. Coronavirus. It is only God who can allow, can order the demon to stop. You see? So you cannot use a physical measure to curb a spiritual problem. I told you in the other episode. I've been preaching in some of the radio messages and I said this. That you cannot use a physical measure to curb a spiritual problem. If God ordered it, then he alone can stop it. If God Almighty ordered it, then he alone can stop it. So it is better to, to look up, but not look to your fellow human being. He cannot do anything. Mind you, some of the doctors are also dying. It tells you that they are only human. The wisest thing to do in the world right now is to look up to God. Who created this world and ordered this demon to destroy. It will only end when my God says stop it. You see, whenever there is destruction going on. It is only God who allows and, or, and the same God who orders it to stop. So you need to understand that. In this world, God allows certain things to happen. In order to test the faith of his people. To find out. Whether we are living in faith or we are living in fear. He wants to find out whether we believe what we promise in his house. That he is the savior. Whether you believe that. Whether you believe he can save you. That is why God has allowed this demon to do what he's doing today. So to the Christian. So Mr. and Mrs. Christian. God is testing your faith. You see, God is testing your faith. Be reminded that God's eyes are watching you. Whether you are living in faith or you are living in fear. God's eyes are watching you. He has allowed this on one side to punish sinners. But on the other side to test the faith of his people. So if you call yourself a Christian, you profess to follow God. Let God see your faith. And where you have faith, fear that I'm going to talk about will not be there. So as I continue today, you need to understand that fear is a very destructive tool that you demons use against the children of God. A very destructive tool that demons use against the children of God. And unfortunately, we professing Christians... I've invited this same fear into our bodies. What is going on has nothing to do with the children of God. I am living in peace. My children are living in peace and in faith. Knowing that nothing will by no means harm us or hurt us. So if you are living in fear, then you have invited the demon called fear into your body. But this has got nothing to do with you. God has not ordered the demon to kill his children. It is not so. He is only destroying people who have no regard to him. So you don't have to live in fear. What is fear? Fear is a negative emotion that an evil will be for you. If you have fear, you have a negative emotion that an evil will be for you. That is why God says in his word, we shouldn't live in fear. Because if you are living in fear, it means you are afraid that something negative is going to happen. That is why God tells his people, do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. Because fear is not from God. That is why Apostle Paul told Timothy that God did not give us the spirit of fear. We don't have the spirit of fear. You see? 
So we need to understand that. And fear is a demon. That when that demon comes into your body, it knocks off the word of God and the faith in you. When the demon called fear enters your body, it knocks off the word of God and the faith in you. You see, in the end, it produces doubt and makes you disbelieve God that he, can, he, that he cannot help you. When, when fear comes into your body, it makes you disbelieve God that he cannot help you. And my question is, if you didn't believe that God can save you, why did you uh, go into his house to promise him that I will take you as my Lord and Savior? Save you from what? Save you from what? If you don't believe, then you are lying. God can save us from these things. He can save us. Believe that he can save you from this pandemic. You see? So let's turn our Bibles today to the book of Mark. And let me show you something. Let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 36 to 40. I read from the New King James. It says that now, when they had left the multitude, they took him, the him there is the Lord, along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Amen. You see, what from the the story I just read, the Lord Jesus intentionally brought the disciples on the sea of Galilee. He intentionally brought them there. Don't forget that he left the multitudes and carried them there. You see, he was trying to find the faith of the people who were around him. God always allows certain things to happen to find those who profess to have faith in him, whether what they said was true or false. That's why he brought them there. Number two, He allowed the windstorm and the waves to beat the boat. The Lord allowed that. God allowed that. Why is it that immediately they entered the boat and were on the sea? The windstorm and the waves began to beat the boat. Why? It was a test. It was a test. Number three. The Lord just lay down to watch their reactions. He was not asleep. He was just lying down to watch their reactions. You see? So, Mr. Christian, I'm saying it again. Mrs. Christian, brother Christian, sister Christian. God is watching your reaction. In the face of this pandemic, in the face of this global threat, God is watching your reaction. He's watching what you do. And please, if you call yourself a Christian, don't disgrace yourself. Don't, don't put disgrace on your own face. God is watching you. You see? The Lord saw their fear. That is why he said to them, Why are you so fearful? <laughs> and without faith. He saw it. You see, if he was asleep, he would not wake up and say, Hey, why are you so fearful? And without faith. It means uh, he, he was expecting the, the two things I spoke about. Faith and peace. Please, always, God is expecting you to live in these two things. Faith and peace. That is why he woke up and said, why, why, why? Why are you so afraid? And, and, and without faith. So, ask yourself, are you living in fear 
or you are living in faith? That is a question I want you to answer yourself. Do you fear that the demon God has created, which we call the coronavirus, can kill you or not? Do you, do you believe that? Do you believe that it can kill you or not? You have to answer that. Or do you believe in God himself? The virus God created. Or God who created the virus. In which one do you believe? If you believe in the virus, fear will kill you. Many people have died because of their fear. But if you live in faith, in God Almighty, who created everything and has allowed this virus to destroy, you will live and glorify him. I will talk to you again in the next episode. But I don't want you to go to hell. Don't be consumed by the demons in this time by fear. But live in faith. Because if you live in faith, you will please God. I will see you again next time. God bless you. Bye bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Tatsu Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.